Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. As you may know, I don't like posting tutorials on one specific thing. I love creating these broad tutorials because then you can pull pretty much any of these techniques and implement them into your future projects so you're not bound to like one project. So in this video, Jordan's gonna be talking about five contrasted motion graphic, you know, techniques, tips that you can implement into pretty much all your projects, but of course it's gonna fall into one specific example. And before we jump in, please be sure to hit that like button because it helps out this channel so much. So we have five techniques for one like, I think that's a heck of a deal. So let's jump into our tutorial and I'm gonna hand it over to Jordan. Hey everyone, this is Jordan and today I'm gonna to show you five techniques to help create this awesome designer composition in After Effects. In this first technique, I'm gonna show you how to make a background of designer shapes like these circles to help fill out the composition. The first thing you want to do is go up to the ellipse tool, then click the fill options button and make sure your fill is set to solid color. The color itself doesn't matter because we're going to be adding a gradient to it. Next, click the stroke options button and make sure stroke is set to none, then hold down the shift key and click and drag to create a perfect circle. Make sure the anchor point is centered by holding down the control key, then double clicking the pan behind tool, and then center the circle by using the align panel and clicking align horizontally and vertically. Now with the circle highlighted, go to effect generate, gradient ramp, and effect, perspective, bevel alpha. In the effect controls panel, we want to set the start of ramp to the bottom right side of the circle and the end of ramp to the top left side of the circle, just like this. Now click the color panel for end color and set it to a dark gray, then set the ramp scatter to about 250. For the bevel alpha, change the edge thickness to 3, then press Ctrl D to duplicate this effect, set the edge thickness of the new effect to 1, change the light angle to negative 225, and bring the light intensity down to 0.20. Now that we have our circle made, right click it, select pre-compose, choose move all attributes into new composition, and hit OK. With the pre-comp highlighted, go up to effect, perspective, drop shadow, then in the effect controls panel, duplicate the drop shadow, set the opacity to 100% and the softness to 100, then duplicate the drop shadow again and set the softness to 300. Now press P to adjust the position, hold down the alt key and click the stopwatch to open the expression controls panel and type in wiggle parentheses 1 comma 100. Lastly, duplicate the circle pre-comp, move it to a new position, adjust the scale a bit and adjust the rotation a bit, then continue to repeat this process until you've filled out the composition with circles. Once you're happy with the layout, highlight all of the circles and then put them into their own pre-comp to use as the background. If you like the style of motion graphics in this video and you want a quick and easy way to add them to your projects with the click of a button, check out our brand new Pulse Pack. It includes over 150 stylized motion graphics to enhance your projects and make them stand out. With our easy to use Atom X extension, all you have to do is find a graphic you like and hit apply. Once it's out on the timeline, you can easily customize the composition with our simple to use control layers and edit the different elements to fit your needs. And just like that, you have a stunning custom composition to use in your projects. This deal is so good, you're losing money if you don't buy it. Check out the link in the description or visit sonduckfilm.com for more info. For this next technique, I'm gonna show you how to animate these titles and use masks to create a cool chopping effect. For the first title, open it up, then select Animate Tracking, and add Property Opacity, then decrease the tracking amount until all the letters are scrunched up at the start of the title, and set the opacity to 0%. Now, open up the Range Selector, set a keyframe for Start at the beginning of the timeline, move forward a bit, then increase the Start to 100%. Highlight both keyframes, then press F9 to make them Easy Ease keyframes. For the second title, right click it, then select Create, Create Masks from Text, then go up to Effect, generate stroke, and in the effect controls panel, check the box for all masks, then set the brush size to 4 and set the paint style to reveal original. Next, set a keyframe for end at the start of the timeline, set end to 0%, move forward a bit, then set end to 100% and make sure the keyframes are easy ease keyframes. Now to do the chopping effect, we want to pre-compose this layer and again make sure that move all attributes is selected, that's really important for what we're going to do next. Hit OK, then press Ctrl D to duplicate the layer, bring its position down a bit, then select the rectangle tool and click and drag to mask the layer so it's cut off at the bottom of the first layer. Then duplicate that layer, bring the mask down a tiny bit, and move the position down so it's underneath the previous layer. Lastly, offset their time on the timeline and now you have this cool chopped up effect for the title. A quick extra technique we can do is create an opening transition by going to Layer, new, solid, set the color to something a little bit lighter than pure black, and hit OK. 
Then simply set a keyframe for position at the start of the timeline, move forward a bit, and increase the X value until the solid is completely off frame, then make the keyframes easy ease keyframes. And just like that, you have a quick reveal transition for the start of your composition. Now that we have all of our visuals done, make sure to enable motion blur for all of them by highlighting the layers, then checking the motion blur box just like this. For this next technique, we're going to use adjustment layers to create a cool glitch effect to put over our background layer. First, go to Layer, New, Solid, click OK, then go to Effect, Noise and Grain, Fractal Noise, Effect, Time, Posterize Time. Now in the Effect Controls panel, set Fractal Type to Max, Noise Type to Block, set the Contrast to 300, Brightness to negative 150, Open Transform, uncheck Uniform Scaling, set Scale Width to 1500, Scale Height to 50, then Alt click the stopwatch next to Turbulence, type Wiggle, parentheses 60, 500, and lastly set the Frame Rate to 6. Next, pre-compose the layer, set the name to Map, Click OK, hide the layer, then go to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. With the Adjustment Layer highlighted, go to Effect, Distort, Displacement Map, set the Displacement Map layer to Map, Horizontal Displacement to 15, and check the box for Wrap Pixels Around. Lastly, make sure the Adjustment Layer is only above the Background Layer because we want the glitch effect on the background and nothing else. And now you have this nice glitch effect applied to your background layer. For this last technique, we're just going to add a few more adjustment layers to add some final touches to our composition. Go to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer, rename it to Noise, go to Effect, Noise and Grain, Noise, then in the Effect Controls panel, set the amount of noise to 15% and uncheck Use Color Noise. If you didn't realize it, by how many times I just said Noise, this effect will add noise to the composition and give it a subtle, fuzzy, static effect. Next, create another adjustment layer, name this one to Glow, then go to Effect, Stylize, Glow, and in the Effect Controls panel, set the Glow Intensity to 0.4, duplicate the effect, set the Glow Intensity to 0.7, and Glow Radius to 120. Now, Alt-click the stopwatch for Glow Radius and type Wiggle parentheses 1, 90 to create a flickering light effect over the composition. With all of these techniques combined, we've created this amazing designer composition to use for your projects in After Effects. So that's another tutorial done by Jordan. Be sure to leave a comment, support him, let him know how he did, drop likes on this video because it helps us out so much and let us know that, you know, Jordan's cool enough to keep around, which he is. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new to our channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post multiple post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. Hit us up on Instagram or post tutorials on there as well. And always be creative.